Hi, I'm Lea Talozzi. I'm a postdoc at University of Bodum. And uh, I'm happy to be part of the Brain Parcellation Educational Course. And uh, uh, we are going to deal with uh, latent dysphonotone prediction of long term cognitive symptoms in stroke. In this project, we created a neuropsychological white matter atlas and WMA. So we are focusing on the white matter and we want to correlate uh, specific areas uh, uh, in the white matter with neuropsychological scores. Uh, these scores were acquired for patients who had a stroke and were recorded after one year uh, from the stroke onset. Here I reported the uh, different acronyms of the scores that were 86 and colored by um, the different functional domains. Right motor function with a special attention, sickness, left motor function, language with a special memory or verbal memory. A stroke uh, happens when there is a cerebrovascular injury in the brain. This injury will occur um, in different uh, um, cerebral artery territories, so the posterior, the middle, or the anterior one. And the uh, stroke localization can be really diverse across the patients. Thanks to neuroimaging techniques, it's possible to visualize in vivo the stroke localization uh, with a fast but poorly contrast uh, using a computer tomography, a scans, or with more details uh, using magnetic resonance imaging. Here, the stroke lesion is indicated by the uh, red uh, arrows, and you can appreciate how the different contrasts uh, provide us different uh, uh, informations and images um, for stroke lesions. We analyzed different cohorts. The first acquired at the UCL London uh, dataset one that was the biggest, 1,343 stroke patients. Uh, then uh, other two datasets, dataset two and three, acquired at Washington Side US. All the MRI scans were acquired within one, two weeks from the stroke onset, whereas the neuropsychological scores acquired for the cohorts uh, in Washington. Uh, for one year after the stroke onset, and uh, 86 neuropsychological scores were acquired. So uh, we deal with uh, a problem, uh, that is the uh, high uh, variability that we can have according to the stroke uh, pathology. So uh, one of the goals of this project is to summarize uh, this uh, variability. I like to start with an example uh, from Sir Francis Galton, who he was a great statistician, uh, one of the first, indeed, uh, the famous Carl Pearson wrote his biography in 1914. And uh, he um, collected a lot of data about the human uh, behavior it was the first to um, suministrate uh, questionnaires to really collect the data, so a data meaning approach. And here in his uh, uh, publication in Nature in 1907, he uh, proposed the model to summarize the variability that uh, he uh, could find in uh, many uh, portraits of human faces. And you can see here, uh, how he uh, really created a model to uh, schematize this uh, problem uh, according to the variability. And uh, uh, he said, uh, I have applied the above method to portraits, and uh, as that far, it is efficient in all of them. We want to, to find a model that will be efficient in uh, all the, the stroke lesion that we can have. And in particular, we are uh, going to use this word uh, morphospace that derived for the morphometrics of Sir Francis Galton. Um, and uh, we're going to use it for uh, uh, stroke patients. In particular, we uh, use dimensionality reduction techniques uh, to uh, make this problem uh, easily understandable, let's use um, a really simple example. Uh, so if you have emoticons of uh, different faces, 
Um, so they have different characteristics. They can have uh, different uh, uh, sunglasses, different expressions. They can uh, uh, smile, they can cry, they can have uh, uh, their eyes uh, in different shapes. And the uh, dimensionality reduction algorithm use all this information, so the variability of the input data set, uh, to uh, derive a latent dimension or embedding dimensions, in this case two, and characterize the uh, input data with coordinates in this space. We um, used um, this connect home data. So we uh, would like to uh, analyze the variability uh, of this connection in stroke patients. Um, uh, for doing so, we manually delineated the stroke lesions for the patients. And then we used the normative data set acquired for the Human Connection Project 7 Tesla uh, to obtain whole brain tractography for 163 patients. Here, uh, one of the disconnectomes that we obtain, uh, where you can uh, see uh, the uh, white matter fibers passing through the stroke lesions. Here, the probability map, according to the uh, healthy controls, the probability of these connections, um, and is uh, plotted here in the MNI space where all these analyses were conducted. In particular, for the dimensionality embedded, we use the uniform maniform approximation and projection method, UMAP. Uh, UMAP is uh, a new method uh, that uh, has uh, really good performances. Uh, indeed, uh, if it's compared here to the TSNE method, halo better segregation of the data, or in terms of computational time, it is more stable across uh, uh, embedding dimensions and uh, uh, it requires uh, lowest time in comparison to uh, the TSNE large width algorithms. This is the um, morphospace uh, disconnectome distribution that we obtain, highlighted three uh, patients that were uh, plotted in a uh, diverse area of the morphospace. We used dataset one, the largest, to uh, obtain the UMAP transformation. And then we used this uh, same framework to import new patients, here dataset two and dataset three. Uh, you can see for the patient that I highlighted that the patient with a similar pattern of disconnection uh, will be projected close by in the disconnect on the space, so with uh, uh, closer coordinates. Otherwise, they will be uh, projected uh, far apart. Here, uh, I also plotted the single tracks disconnections. In particular, uh, I reported three tracks, the cortical spinal tract, CST, the inferior frontocipital fasciculus, the HIFOF, the arcuate fasciculus, AF. You can see uh, how uh, they are uh, um, clusterized in the morphospace. So when the highest probability according to one of these tracts occur, uh, the uh, patients are projected close by in the morphospace. These two underline uh, the uh, variability uh, dimensionality reduction that we obtain with the morphospace. And uh, as you can notice, there is uh, uh, a symmetry in this shape that is due to the laterality of the lesion localization in the, uh, in the patient. Then the neuropsychological scores uh, that we are interested in. So they were 86 acquired at one year after the stroke onset. We can summarize them in the major functional domain. So uh, motor, language, visual spatial ability, uh, visual spatial memory, verbal memory, sickness, and pain. Here, some uh, illustrations of the uh, tasks that were acquired to the patient. So uh, hand grasping, pitching, nine hole peg replacement, uh, grip strength, shoulder and wrist extension, or uh, uh, animal verbal fluency, uh, the Boston naming uh, test, 
or the Posner visa spatial ability uh, test. Then uh, we uh, correlated the uh, reported neuropsychological scores with the localization in the morphospace. And we obtained what we called a composite morphospace that merge these two informations. Here are reported the three examples of neuropsychological scores for three uh, domains, motor, language, and visual spatial. Uh, focusing on motor, uh, there is the left and grasping from the ARA battery, and you can see has uh, uh, lower uh, scores correspond to a deficit in this uh, domain, and you can appreciate the clear the, um, segregation of the lowest scores in the morphospace, whereas for language, the uh, Boston naming uh, test, and uh, again, the lowest uh, of course, uh, um, reported um, were associated to a poor performance in this uh, domain. And you can see, uh, as for language, the distribution is more complex in the morphospace. Indeed, here highlighted the uh, clusters of correlations with the R in module uh, higher than 0 0.2, so with a medium effect size. And uh, finally, for the uh, Posner accuracy of disengage, uh, you can see uh, again as the lowest uh, um, scores uh, were projected in the morphospace. Here, the uh, correlations reported uh, were more uh, bilateral. Uh, these are the scores uh, that uh, were recorded for the data set two that served us as a training set for a multiple regression formula. Uh, first, we run a principal component analysis to summarize with three components, so three scores, the neuropsychological variability in the embedding space. Uh, then we use those scores as an input of the multiple regression formula to predict the one here uh, affected the neuropsychological scores. Then uh, how? How going back to the neuroimaging space uh, to create uh, what we call the neuropsychological white matter atlas. We used the first data set uh, because it uh, was the biggest and we split it in two alphas to assess the atlas reproducibility. And we uh, run pixel-wise correlations using FSL randomized. And uh, uh, we correlated the risk territories that uh, uh, highlighted with uh, the uh, R in module major than 0.2 with the disconnectum location in the neuroimaging space. And here are the results. Uh, for the uh, left and grasping, you can see the uh, disconnectum patterns uh, correlating with. Uh, in this case, uh, they were on the right hemisphere with uh, fibers going uh, toward the parsopercolaris, promoter cortex, uh, superior temporal gyres or passing through the striatum. For the language score, uh, we uh, got correlations with the left fibers through the external capsule and toward the superior temporal gyres and middle temporal gyres. For the uh, postness accuracy of disengage, more bilateral correlations passing through the corpus callosum, uh, bilateral insula, bilateral striatum, right, a uh, long segment of the uh, arcuate fasciculus or left thalamus. Um, we run this for all the 86 neuropsychological scores and we obtain uh, a summary map. Uh, here are the highest correlations across the scores. Uh, the acronyms of all the scores that uh, uh, now I didn't report it, but you can find it in our uh, preprint that is currently under review. Uh, the um, clusterization according to the different uh, functional domains. And then we uh, also uh, can create uh, some uh, uh, maps. The first one uh, in relation to the highest effect size obtained, so F square. 
uh, and you can see that the highest effect size was on the left uh, frontal uh, connections, whereas the uh, versatility mapping panel B uh, reported the overlap of the neuropsychological uh, finding in the uh, white matter. And you can see has the highest number of overlap occurred for the uh, right hemisphere. Finally, we really want to make this uh, uh, model transferable to an application. And uh, we create a freely usable web application. I leave you here the QR code so you can play a little bit with it. There is an example of one of the disconnectum you can upload and run the model online. Uh, in this application built in uh, uh, Python, the Django, uh, you can uh, run uh, the model that I show you for the neuropsychological prediction. Uh, you have also a lot of uh, descriptions about uh, uh, the neuropsychological scores. You can download the uh, neuropsychological web meter atlas. Here, uh, here's uh, a little. Um, tutorial to going around the application. So the disconnect on morphospace uh, uh, distribution, uh, some information about the scores. So the acronyms that I show you in the summary map uh, that here you can see which uh, battery was used, uh, the references and etc. Here you uh, can upload the disconnectum of your patient, so for uh, a personalized outcome, and you can run the uh, analysis uh, on uh, um, on whatever you want. So, like, uh, it's not important uh, which browser or if uh, in a computer or in a smartphone. And uh, here it's plotted the uh, outcome, so the UMAP coordinates and the scores are predicted. You can download this as a CSV file and use it for further analysis uh, for your patient. So in conclusion, uh, we um, summarize the variability of stroke disconnection using dimensionality reduction techniques, in particular UMAP. This uh, HALO has to uh, run correlation analysis with the patient neuropsychological scores, obtaining a prediction formula that assess the long-term cognitive symptoms at one year, uh, analyzing the neuroimaging data within one, two weeks from the stroke onset. Then the neuropsychological atlas, uh, HALO asks to visualize onto the white matter the uh, risk territories uh, obtaining the neuropsychological uh, uh, composite morphospace within the brain. Then the web application uh, will really uh, HALO a broader validation of the uh, model proposed and uh, um, really use it if you're curious about it and uh, want to see uh, your patient uh, uh, predicted outcome. Of course, I would like to thank you for the attention and all the my collaborators uh, that make this project possible. <laughs>